Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be ranking all five seasons of Heroes, the TV show from 2006. And that includes Heroes Reborn. Now, I have reviews for each and every season of this show. There's a playlist for that on my channel. But if you have been watching those videos, you'll know that I love the first season, but it all goes downhill from there. Now, please keep in mind, this is simply my opinion and there will be spoilers ahead, obviously, so you've been warned. Anyway, let's jump straight into it. So coming in at number five is season two. This is the season that pretty much doomed the entire show to the point where what could have gone down as one of the greatest TV dramas of all time ended up being one of the biggest letdowns in TV history. However, all of this was largely due to the Writers Guild of America strike at the time and the network's desire to keep the characters from season one instead of utilizing an anthology format and introducing new characters in each season. The story was a bloated, unfocused, and unevenly paced mess with characters who added nothing to the plot or their arcs felt a tad bit redundant based on what we had seen before and a lot of familiar plot points were recycled. Plus, Claire Bennett's blood type was revealed to be capable of actually bringing people back from the dead, which meant that technically no one could die, like at all. But I'm glad the later seasons at least sort of retconned this, they just kind of forgot about it. That being said, there are some good things about this season. The core premise revolving around the Shanti virus and the conspiracy that comes with it. Hero's journey to Japan in the 1600s where he meets his hero Kenzai who turns out to be a drunken Englishman whose real name is later revealed to be Adam Monroe and the dynamic between him and Hero I think worked really well. And there were a couple of interesting new characters like Maya and her brother Alejandro as well as Ellie Bishop. But overall, the season really, really suffered from the writer's strike, which caused it to be cut down to just 11 episodes, and plans for the 11th episode had to be changed. If none of this happened, I think season 2 could have turned out to be amazing, but obviously that wasn't the case. And while it wasn't terrible, it was still extremely disappointing. So I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10. So coming in at number 4 is season 4. Now upon watching the season, I had gotten tired of the show and I just couldn't wait for it to end so I could jump straight into Heroes Reborn even though I had no idea what to expect with that particular miniseries. But upon reflection, season 4 is a little bit better than most people remember. This was the season where a carnival was looking to recruit some new people in order to basically massacre hundreds of carnival goers at their next performance. Yes, it still has a lot of the same problems that most of the seasons do. Plot points are recycled, the material is stretched thin, the first half is incredibly convoluted to the point where I had no idea what the main villain's plan was. And while it had intended to scale things back down compared to the high stakes of seasons 2 and 3, I feel as if though it was a bit too small in terms of scale. And there were characters like Mohinda and Tracy Strauss that were just kind of shoved off to the side. And even characters like Hero had an interesting arc, but he had very little involvement in the main story. Still, there were some good things about season four. You had a fantastic villain in the form of Samuel Sullivan, played by Robert Nepo, aka T-Mac from Prison Break. He and his carnival were an interesting bunch, and Sila's redemption was long awaited and it felt on by the end. And Claire, well, we all know what she did. She basically exposed her ability to, you know, the public, and that has huge consequences on Heroes Reborn. However, none of this was necessarily enough to save the show from being cancelled. And rightfully so, because people just got tired of it by this point. So overall, if season 4 was your least favorite season, maybe give it a rewatch and, you know, maybe you'll change your mind on that. So, overall, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Coming in at number 3 
is season 3. So this season did have some ambition behind it, I'll give it that, but it wasn't enough as this is just another mediocre season. So it's broken down into two distinct halves. For the first half, Arthur Petrelli comes back from the dead and he teams up with a group of escaped convicts who are all practically supervillains and he tasks them with finding a formula that can make superhuman abilities accessible to the public and he believes this will make the world a better place. And in the second half, after failing to produce the formula and after Arthur is killed by Scylla, Nathan turns his back on pretty much everybody, Peter and all the other heroes after informing the President of the United States about their existence. And so the government pursues them and they all go into hiding. You know, I honestly thought that this was going to be a good season, but it came up short mainly because the first half was extremely bloated. Some of the characters weren't really given much to do. In fact, I hated Sila's arc in particular. You know, there were signs of a possible redemption for him and that's what I was really looking forward to this season. And he even got to reunite with his father, who was played by everybody's favorite Lionel Luther, John Glover. And there were even hints at a possible romance between him and Ellie. But by the halfway point, pretty much all of that gets thrown out the window. And then he proceeds to kill Arthur, who at one point he assumed was his biological father. And because of that, after Nathan redeems himself, considering he acted out of character for most people, the season pretty much devolves into, hey, Silas the bad guy again, let's go stop him again. There were character deaths that were also frustrating, you know, Arthur dying halfway through. There's even his first attempt at creating a super soldier and that first soldier pretty much dies by getting his neck snapped, if I recall. And yeah, that was kind of anticlimactic. Even the way Scylla quote unquote dies halfway through was kind of lackluster. And while I wasn't against the idea of Daphne being killed off, I felt that it was a bit too early into the season for that. But at the very least, the good stuff is what kind of holds it together from being flat out terrible. The character arcs of Matt Parkman, hero, Nathan turning bad, and the whole thing with the futuristic versions of Peter and Claire. I really like that. And let's not forget the subplot involving the solar eclipse that spanned two episodes. I actually kind of enjoyed those episodes even though they weren't perfect. It was nice to see the characters being stripped of their powers for a while. And even the new characters in general were interesting. You know, the characters of Arthur Petrelli, Daphne Milbrook, Usutu, and so on. But overall, this wasn't enough to overcome all of its major flaws. So overall, just like the last two seasons, it gets a 6 out of 10. So now for my top two. We have season one, the one that started it all. And we have Heroes Reborn, the mini series that was meant to continue the original show, but was canceled after one season. These are the only two installments in the entire series that I actually enjoyed. But obviously, if you've been watching my reviews, this is a no-brainer. Number two is going to be Heroes Reborn. So, a couple of years after the cliffhanger ending of season four, humans and evos, people with supernatural abilities, now live together in harmony and a terrorist attack happens, and evos are framed for it, causing humanity to turn their backs on them. And then a year later, Noah Bennett and a couple of old and new faces band together to try and figure out who's responsible for the terrorist attack. This miniseries had a lot to offer and it also had a lot riding on its shoulders. It had to provide some kind of closure for the old characters in case it got cancelled and it also had to introduce a bunch of new characters and if the miniseries was a success then we could see more. But the end result is still pretty decent especially since Tim Kring, who created Heroes, returned as the showrunner. The new characters were all interesting and the season did a good job of balancing them with the old characters. The conspiracy that is unraveled throughout the season was interesting and the political subtext revolving around a divided nation is something very common in today's society. The story was an interesting mix of old and new ideas and it wrapped things up decently 
for the original series and the original characters. And Tim Kring is pretty proud of what he accomplished, despite the mixed reviews and eventual cancellation. However, Heroes Reborn was not perfect. The pacing was a bit of a problem because while the villain's motives were substantial, over the course of 13 episodes, they took a bit too long to be fleshed out. The story may have been well written, but it was also occasionally convoluted and difficult to keep up with. And the fact that Peter and Ando didn't return, that kind of bugged me. I'm okay with Sila not returning, but the fact that Claire was revealed to have been killed off screen, that kind of upset me and pretty much everybody who watched Heroes Reborn. That being said, she is still a very integral part of the story, despite her death. And I found myself enjoying this more than the last three seasons of the show. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. But my number one pick, and quite frankly everybody's number one pick, is season one. This is one of the best seasons of television history. It should have been a miniseries and it would have been fine, and its legacy would have been better off for it. Or they could have kept the show going if they wanted to, but maybe they should have stuck to the original anthology format, in which each season introduces a bunch of new characters. Or they could have changed up the formula in ways that we hadn't seen before, even if it meant bringing back the old characters. But anyway, season 1 is so groundbreaking, and it holds up remarkably well today for so many reasons. It's more grounded take on the superhero genre, the idea that we would be focusing on these characters individually, and they would really meet from time to time, but they all played a pivotal role in the story, and they would all come together right at the very end. And the ticking time bomb scenario that it goes for, reminiscent of 24, except there's 23 episodes and there's a bomb that's gonna go off in New York. And just the basic introductions that we get to the characters, from Hiro Nakamura to Peter Petrelli to Mohinder Suresh to Claire Bennett, and of course that tagline, save the cheerleader, save the world. A phrase that was frequently used in the show's marketing campaign and has now become synonymous with the show. The premiere episode was possibly the best premiere episode and so was the finale. The finale was just amazing. Is it perfect? Definitely not. But its flaws are so minor that it's easy to overlook them and they won't ruin your enjoyment of the season. So overall, season 1 gets a 9.7 out of 10. It really is that close to perfection. So yeah, that was my ranking of heroes. This show overall, uh, wasted potential. You know, it starts off well, it falls apart. It kind of ends well with Heroes Reborn, depending on who you ask. If you've watched the show, you'll know that I didn't really get too deep into spoilers in this video, and that's because I just don't care for that, really. I mean, seasons 2, 3, and 4 were so lackluster that they're not even worth spoiling to some extent. And if I get any further in-depth when it comes to spoilers for the show, we'll be here all day long. So next time, we're gonna be delving into another TV show. This time, we're gonna be looking at Dexter. I'm really excited to talk about that because I do have some memories of the show in high school. Not that many. We'll talk about that next time. And I'm really excited for the revival, Dexter New Blood, which is scheduled to premiere on the 7th of November, in case you're wondering. So thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like the video, share it, and subscribe. Hit the notification icon, be safe during this time, and I'll see you soon.